doesn't that all look lovely going on down there with all that nice sky and the little beach huts and all that sort of stuff? Come down here today because I want to talk to you a little bit more about using a Lee Big Stopper filter. Now, there's two sides to this film really. One is about how to use one. Now, we've already made a film with Tom Mackey, which you've probably seen. We fell in love and ate cheese and threw stones in the sea. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, go and have a look for it. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. But I want to talk to you a little bit more in depth, just take you through the thought process of using a big stopper. But this thought process runs through all of photography. This is like thinking through the picture you want to take and then making choices about your camera settings along the way. None of this is going to be rehearsed. I have very rarely used my big stopper, I have to confess, because landscape isn't something I do a great deal of. So this is a learning curve for me as well. What I'm going to do is go around, see if I can find some shots that I think will work. I'm going to talk you through why I think they'll work, and then you can watch how I set it up and the questions I ask myself to get the settings that I'm going to need. So without further ado, I suppose we better go and take some... Hang on. Do you know Lorna? You've probably met Lorna. If you've watched many of our films, you've probably met Lorna. She's modelled in quite a lot of them. If you've seen the one which is an introduction to Flash where I'm talking about bouncing light and there's a girl gets totally soaking wet in a t-shirt, it's Lorna. Well, today is Lorna's... Give me that minute. <laughs> we have on camera Lorna. She's making her very first film with us. So good luck, Lorna. Anyway, let's go and take some pictures. We'll see what we can find. Okay, I've found a shot, which I quite like. This is the row of beach huts over here. <clears throat> we've got the dark one on the end, we've got the cream one on the right, they make a nice little row of huts against the sky. A windy day like this is great for a big stopper because things are moving. The wind is blowing across this way, so the clouds up here, in theory, what I'm after is a shot with the clouds sort of blurring across that way. There's a dark cloud up here as well, which hopefully will come across and then it'll all be a lot more noticeable. So let's have a look. So I've actually put my tripod in place already because you don't necessarily need to watch me doing that. How did I find the place where I want my shot? Well, the way I do it is I will do it by hand and move around and find where my shot needs to be, make little adjustments to the exposure and the composition and the zoom and all that kind of stuff as I'm looking through the camera, then when I found my place, put the tripod into that place and put the camera on it. I already kind of did that for you <clears throat> because you don't want to be bored watching me do it. I have a cable release on because the only way to use a big stopper is with a long, slow exposure. We want the slowness of the exposure for the movement of the clouds in the sky to blur. That will contrast against <clears throat> the stillness of the beach huts. So I've already put that on. Next, let's just check what we're doing. Because we want a slow exposure, we're going to use a small aperture. You need to do this in manual mode. I have set my smallest aperture <coughs> with this lens, which is f25. So let's just have a little look through the viewfinder, manually check what my exposure is going to be. A 30th of a second should be absolutely fine. So I've got a 30th of a second at f25. I'm using a daylight white balance because uh, rather than a cloudy one, even though it's a cloudy day, because it's easier to warm the picture up a bit afterwards than it is to try and remove some sort of yellowy, nasty colour casts. Okay, we're all in place there. I'm using my lowest ISO again because I want the shutter speed to be really, really slow. Also, it's going to give me the nicest colours. It'll make the colours in the beach hut stand out a bit more. So what I'm going to do now is just take a picture of the shot as it is. So we can have a little look at a before and after. So I've taken that picture now. Next, let's put on the big stopper. So I'll take my lens hood off. Put my Lee adapter ring onto the front of the lens. You can get them in all sorts of different sizes to fit all your different types of lenses. There we go, screw that on. Focusing has to be done before you put the big stopper on. They're so dark that the camera cannot see through them to focus. I mean, if I just put that there over the lens, you can see 
Look how dark a big stopper is. Yeah, it almost blocks all the lights. It's almost like a welder's mask. <clears throat> so the exposure has been set. Also, focus needs to be set before you put the big stopper on. I've already done that because the camera's autofocus won't work through it either. So the filter holder, that comes on. Really just kind of hook it on the front there and click it into place. There we go. Slide in the filter. A little drop of water in the corner of this, which I'm hoping isn't going to affect it because it's right down in the very bottom corner. We're getting a few little spatters of rain just starting. But this sort of weather should be pretty good for this sort of shot. Of course, I can't see through it. I don't know why I even bothered to look. So, my exposure was a 30th of a second. Big Stop has come with an exposure calculation chart to help you calculate from what the camera says to what it needs because it is removing 10 stops of light. If I look down here on the chart, 30th gives me 30 seconds, okay? So that will be a 30 second long exposure, which will be enough time for these clouds to move in the sky. I'm hoping they're gonna be good enough. I know I didn't get the dark one that I wanted, but never mind. So let me set a 30 second exposure. I just turn the dial. Here we go, here we go, here we go, all the way to 30 seconds. <clears throat> I'm going to use my mirror lock up so that the mirror will jump up and lock out of the way. And finally, I want to stop light getting in the back here because bits of stray light could get into the back of the camera and leak past the mirror and that could mess up your exposure. Normally I have a bit of black tape in the back. Some cameras have a little thing that slots on the back to do that, but I lost mine many years ago and I usually keep a piece of black tape in the back, but in the bag, but I forgot it. So I'm just going to plug the hole, plug up the viewfinder with a bit of blue tack. There we go. Now I know some of you are horrified at the thought of sticking blue tack over the camera's viewfinder, but trust me, it won't hurt it. So our 30 second exposure is set. Everything is ready to rock and roll. And first click lifts the mirror. Second click starts the exposure. What we've got to do now is wait for 30 seconds. During that time, the clouds will move through the sky and I'm hoping that that movement will kind of record onto the camera sensor as a bit of a blur. And we're coming to the end. There it goes. Let's have a little look and see what we've got in our picture. <clears throat> Sun's going in again. The light is changing all the time. It might have been quite good. The sun sort of started to come out at the beginning of our shot. Let's just have a little look. The trouble with these LCDs, of course, is they're so hard to look at, aren't they, when you're in the sunshine. I turned into a blind pew, so I've got my Benny Hill glasses on. So when we look at the first shot, it's really nice. We've got a nice kind of clean, bright sort of a shot with the clouds going on in the sky. And when we just flick onto the, the Lee big stopper shot, you see how those clouds have become a blur? They've just kind of moved around. They've come sort of soft and candy floss like. I quite like the difference between those two. Yeah, I quite like those. Okay, brilliant. Wonder what else we can find. This looks really interesting. We've got the light coming in from over here. The sun has come out, but we've got quite a lot of movement going on in the water. We've got the rocks to anchor it. I love the glinting on the water. So let's see what we can do with the big stopper. I'm in a bit of a hurry because I don't want the light to change. So we've got some grasses down here. They're going to kind of move in the breeze and move around and the stopper, the slow shutter speed is going to let that happen. We've got the sea, which is kind of moving around. Water is the classical big, big stopper type of shot, the slow exposure shot. Let me take one without the filter. So set up my exposure. I've chosen my composition with the rock here and the grass and everything going on over there. That looks nice. Just shade the lens. I'm shooting into the light. I don't want lens flare. So I'm just carefully putting a shadow over the glass with my hand. There we go, that's a nice shot, even without the big stopper. Let's get our neutral density on there. Let's slow everything down. 
That tells me it's a 50th, call it a 60th of a second shutter speed. Put the filter in, get my calculator. 60th of a second without means 15 seconds with the big stopper filter. So let's set a 15 second exposure. I can't see. Let's have a look. Here we go. Wind that up to 15 seconds. Where's my piece of trusty blue tack? to stick in the back here to block the viewfinder. I don't want light sneaking in there. 15 seconds, we're ready to race. Put a bit of a shadow over the filter because I don't want to get flare coming off the filter. So now I've got to hold my hand here and hope that I don't get my hand in the shot. During these 15 seconds, the sea is moving, the grasses are waving, the clouds are moving a little bit, and what, here we go. While that's going on, our exposure is happening in the camera. So let's have a look. I've turned into a blind pew these days, so I've got to put these on. Oh, look, I like that. That's nice. Oh, that water looks amazing. The difference between the two is really quite exciting. I'm really enjoying this sort of experimental time out seeing what happens. Just take your time, take your shot slowly, think your way through them. I wonder if there's another one to be had. We just come down here to my favourite little beach restaurant and I wanted a bowl of fish soup and Lorna's freezing cold and wanted a cup of coffee and unfortunately they're closed, we've just missed it. Still never mind, there's an interesting little picture which I think may work using the movement that you need with a big stopper. Up here, We've got the flag fluttering and I know they want to take it down, so I've got to be quick. We've got this sail here. The sail's just going to be juddering in the wind and I really like beach cafe, restaurant sign. So, first thing, find the composition. So lots of bending the knees, moving around, finding the picture that's going to work, which I've already done and got the camera in position. So, let's just take a picture straight off of the flag against the sky like that. Yeah, I think that looks quite nice. So now let's do our big stopper shot. <clears throat> First of all, let's find our exposure. Now, remember we want a fairly slow exposure, but I probably don't want to go quite as slow as I have. So I'm only going to use F11. So let me set my exposure up for F11. That says a 1 60th of a second at F11. So a 1 60th of a second it's going to be, ooh, let's have a look, 125th gives us 8 seconds. So it's somewhere between 8 and 15 seconds. So I'm going to go with a 10 second exposure. So, big stopper in place. And also notice, I've turned the camera up on its side, on its end. Because, just because you're using a big stopper or shooting landscapes or something, doesn't mean you always have to have your camera flat. Just, you know, think a bit differently sometimes. So it was a 10 second exposure that I'm looking for. Let's wind that down to 10 seconds. And I don't know if this is going to work. This is going to be pure experimentation. Everything's done. I've pre-focused. I've switched off the autofocus so that I know the focus can't move. Now all I have to do is press the shutter and let it just run its course for 10 seconds. During those 10 seconds, the flag's moving, the sail's bobbing up and down. There's probably a little bit of movement going on in the clouds and the sky. So there it is. Yeah, there's our shot. Oh, thank you very much. No Cheers, Don't appreciate that. No worries, thank you. Nice people, even though they closed, even brought us out a couple of cups of coffee. Love people like that, don't you? So let's have a little look and compare the two. Oh, I like that. I love the way that flag is rippling like crazy. When we compare it to the faster shutter speed shot, I really kind of like that. This sort of put a sense of movement into it. <clears throat> I'm pleased it worked because I didn't know whether it would or not. So don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to get things wrong, you know. Um, get out there. 
if you've got a big stopper, go and have a good old play with it. Hopefully that's given you some insight into the thoughts behind it. Set your exposure first, think your way through it, and come home with three great pictures that you're pleased with, that you're proud of, that you might want to put up on the mantelpiece or stick on the wall, rather than coming home with loads that you're not so keen on. And another thing, <clears throat> think about where you're going to go when you do this. Don't just go out and spend a load of money on something like a, a Lee filter, which are, they're pretty expensive because they're good quality. But don't just buy one and then go into a gravel car park and expect exciting pictures. Think about where you're going to go. Where is there likely to be a shot where there's some movement? It's one of the reasons we came here, apart from the fish soup, is because I know there's water moving, there's going to be grasses waving, flags fluttering, that kind of stuff. So there we go. I hope that helped. <laughs>